Hey everybody, my name is Alex, and in this video I'm going to go over a script I just wrote because I got really tired of parsing my event logs manually, going through and control F and grepping different phrases. So I started to compile a list of common phrases that you might see. We just recently went through uh, cycle gaps, so I was able to find a lot of the normal logs that you would see dur during a cycle gap. I don't have a lot of error codes or other logs that might be useful, so uh, I'd love it if you run into issues like your proof is invalid or you fail to submit an ATX on time or register with a, a poet. Anything that basically has issues, uh, I'd love to see your logs. That way I can add some of that errors, uh, error handling into the script so it outputs errors and not just good things, but also you know bad things that you should be worried about. Uh, but this, this uh, video mainly is to just kind of give a little demo of it. It's called Potato Parse, and uh, there's no installation instructions. It is just a Python script just a main.py. One thing to note is you're going to need to come in here and change the path to wherever your logs are. So it basically does like one log file at a time. Uh, this can be improved and I probably will improve it over time. You can see the key events, the different things that I look for when I'm going through the log. It would be great if people again can you know, submit some new key events that might be useful to have in here. It follows a pretty standard pattern where I just extract the logs from it. Sometimes I will pull out interesting data, which you will see uh, from the JSON that gets extracted. And uh, overall, it's a pretty simple script, but let's get into the terminal here and get it installed. So I'm going to bring up Termius here. I'm in Venus and I'm just going to uh, grab this. Let's see here. We should be able to just do git clone. Uh, actually, you know what? I want to use the HTTPS git clone. There we go. So I have potato parse in here. I'm going to CD into potato parse. And I just have a main file in here. You don't even really, you don't need to do anything other than run it because there's no uh, libraries that aren't native that we're going to be using. But what I do need to do is get the log file location. And I'm writing Docker. So for some of you, it might be super easy because the logs are just wherever you output them. Uh, you can get to them easily. If you're running SMAP, uh, it's this, you can just you know, easily find your log file. For me, I would have to just get into sudo here. I'm going to cd var lib docker containers, and then I'm just going to pick a random container. Um, actually, let me jump over here on my other screen and go into portainer and see if I can just find a good one. Let's see, we're in Venus. Containers. Let's try. This should have something. Okay, so we will CD into this one. Perfect. All right, so if I'm in my container ID, which I'll just, uh, I'll show you where to get it, because I think a, a lot of people might be running uh, Docker. So Uh, let me switch screens here. Okay, so inside your Docker, you should be able to, if you go to containers, and I just picked like a random container here, node 11, you should see an ID with uh, your container ID listed here. And now if you go back into uh, your host, you can see the directory is var lib docker containers and then that container id and then inside the container folder there's a json.log that is where your log file is so i'm just going to select all of this and i'm going to put it in a notepad uh, and then i'm going to select this 
and I'm just going to append it here, and then I'm just going to go into, I can just exit now, and then I'm going to go into main.py, and I'm just going to update this to my actual log here. And once you have this in here, like if you have a couple different nodes, you can just swap out the container IDs. It's, you don't have to put the whole new URL in here. You should be good. Control X to save, then we'll press Y for yes, and then enter to write the file. And now you have to run this as sudo if you are using Docker containers because that var lib folder is owned by root. So I'm just gonna run sudo main.py oops sudo python3 main.py cool all right so we got it um and this is what it looks like so we can see you know back in december i probably started this node it's been running since december 22nd it reached out to all of the uh, or created for each of the poets listed in my config it created a poet client proposal builder started uh, post setup complete for post in the directory. I have 56 num units. The ATX challenge is ready, but it was already published basically when you start your node. Uh, this is all like standard node starting things. So this is when I turned my node on and it's been earning rewards. You can see it created the poet clients. Then it received a 200 response getting poet info. And you can see it hit the different poet servers and we want 200 response, that's good. And then eventually it got four proposal eligibilities for Epoch 11 with a weight of 5525952. And these are the layers. And, you know, this is what gets printed out. Typically, if you're running SMAP, you'll see, you know, your layers get printed out. But now you can see it in your logs here. And then we can see uh, periodically you just somehow, uh, it does this a lot, I noticed. It just successfully stores poet proof, uh, you know, for whatever epoch uh it's interesting i don't know a uh, proposal created so you can see this is actually one of my layers 46533 46533 so we can see the layer was published with the latency of 13 milliseconds so we should have been good it's very low latency we got some more uh storage things going on here and then this is the cycle gap on december 24th and we can see what happens is uh everything breaks for a little while. I get 404, uh, finally start to get some 200 responses, some more 200 responses. And you can see it's just basically trying to get the poet servers uh, for quite a bit of time here for the first three minutes or so, which is actually pretty good. Uh, finally, it gets them all. And you can see the leaf count for each poet it receives once it gets the proof. Uh, and then, of course, it's going to select the best proof. So it selected the one with 87,000, which is the highest one listed here. Um, so once it selects the best proof, it will be uh, from the poet, it will begin generating its own proof. Proofing starts at 803. It does these like successfully, you know, uh, stored poet proofs a few times. Just it just does this periodically. And I'm not totally sure, but I think it's pretty normal. But you can see at 5.34 a.m. a node has found a proof and then it begins to wait to publish the ATX. Then the ATX gets published. This is the node ID in Epoch 11 with 56 num units for reward address. And this is my reward address. And then we, now we have at seven o'clock, uh, ATX challenge is ready and will be published in Epoch 12. So uh, this is just something that gets submitted basically now that your ATX gets published, the challenge is ready for the next like cycle gap that occurs basically. Um, and that's really it. And you can see once the ATX challenge is ready, will be published in Epoch 12, you can see it reaches out, gets the proof of work param so that it can submit the post proof to each of the poets. And that's basically the registration. So you can see it happens at 7.01. This is the last hour. I, this is local time. So for me, it's 7.01 AM. Uh, this is in the last hour of the cycle gap. It is now submitting the challenge to the poet proving uh, service for Epoch 11. And it does that for each of the poets. And this is basically registration happening. So I'm registered with all of these for the next cycle gap. 
and then you know we're just continuing on with the normal uh, things later on uh, on December 26th I create another proposal 24 milliseconds and then now we're just continuing to go through uh, you know these poet proofs periodically seem to get stored uh, on my node and I don't necessarily know why but it it's pretty normal I've seen it on all my nodes so far and then there's gonna be you know if you want to watch your logs I actually I should probably delete that out um, but there's going to be a function where it will just you could start it up and it'll read through your existing log print all this out and then watch for new logs that come in so if it's like cycle gap and you want to just watch and see you know in the beginning what's going on uh, you know to make sure that you get all the poet proofs and you select the proof and you uh, start creating uh, proof uh, has started this is like a good way of knowing if things are going correctly um, and then of course it might be a little while but eventually you'll get this notice found poet uh, has found proof so if you just leave the script running you can come back and check periodically or maybe you can set up something else that happens when this uh, log is found but either way, I feel like this helps a lot of people because there's a lot of questions like, hey, did my node do things correctly? Like, am I good? Uh, you know, what, what else do I need to do? This will be a great way of making sure that everything is working as it should. So and as, as you can see, it's pretty easy to install. You literally just clone the repo, add the location of your log file, and run the script. So hopefully this helps some people. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want more tools like this. I'm trying to build them periodically uh, where I see a need. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video.